There's nothing more frightening than our government coming in, knocking on your door, and taking your child from you. We have a firsthand account coming from Aram, who is the producer of Uncle Sam's Kid. His firsthand experience with CPS showing up at his door, and his 11-year-old daughter was tasered by the police. She recently had to get a tooth repaired because when she went down on the concrete, it weakened her gum line. So joining me now, we have Aram from Uncle Sam's Kids. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Although it was a, a very informational piece, I found it to be a bit heart-wrenching. Tell us about how this uh, came together. Well, it's a heart-wrenching topic. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of hard to do a documentary on it because there's so many things that you want to cover in something like this, especially if it's a personal experience. And then you're, you know, limited technically by time and by the information you can get. Um, but there's just so many facets of this that I think really do need to be covered. And uh, I was hoping to at least kind of break the ice on this topic so maybe people could become more aware, do some research, that there is this institution in our government that is doing some very wicked things. And it's, it's a, a typical government agency where their actions promote themselves in a way to where they destroy families. Now, Aram, why don't we start at the beginning for our viewers that don't know CPS at all, because maybe there's some without children. Explain how you got, how this all came to you, your involvement, and how you had to deal with them so that we can see the motivation of the creation of the film. Okay. All right. Well, when my first child was born, um, he was born about a month premature, um, so he was in the hospital for his day, and uh, in the NICU. And the doctors, you know, approached about the regular vaccinations and wanted me to sign off on them. And I said, no way. And I looked through their list of vaccinations, and I especially noticed the hepatitis B vaccination. And I got in this kind of heated discussion with the uh, pediatrician about the hepatitis B vaccination and how absurd it was to vaccinate a newborn child for something that they could basically only get by being either a drug addict or engaging in you know, certain types of activities. <laughs> There's no risk of getting it, none. So why, why did they, what was their argument? Well, the way it works, um, generally from my experience and talking to others, is there's a thing called the mandatory reporting law. Well, basically it's a law here in Oregon, and other states have it as well, that if a doctor sees maybe potential neglect or abuse, they're required by law to report it, so then CPS can come and investigate. And basically they're assuming, okay, they're gonna come talk to the parents, and everything's gonna be fine, and they'll leave. But the problem with CPS is once that system is put underway, well, once they start the case, they get you, you have to do a psychological evaluation. And then they determine that I was mentally ill. And then they make a case report. And then you're required to do uh, whatever the psychiatrist thinks you should do, whether it's take medication and go to classes and courses and all that. Wait, uh, what, were they, what were they saying you were mentally ill of? Uh, they, said I had, <laughs> they said I had Asperger's and... Um, that I was narcissistic. And I was, because well, I We was, could say that about most of the United States government. Right, but I was trying to argue with the uh, <laughs> psychiatrist. I said, look, you can't take someone's child and then give them a proper mental health evaluation. You just traumatize the person. They're obviously not going to be in the appropriate mindset to give or to obtain an accurate psychological evaluation. Because by that time, my child was already gone for about a month. Wow. So I was, you know, freaking out. And they have this way of making you seem narcissistic because you, because you want your child back. You're mentally ill because you want your child back. And they tell you that if you were really a good parent, you wouldn't want your kid back because you need to get treatment. And if you don't get treatment, then you're putting your kid at risk. And what treatment were they encouraging? Uh, I, they wanted me to take uh, some SSRI. I don't remember what it was. Um, it was an antidepressant, and then uh, another drug for, uh, what else did they say it was? Um, so basically they wanted you to get on pharma. That was their solution. Yeah. They wanted Instead me, of tackling it, this so-called imaginary problem that they created. Depakote. Depakote. Oh, there you go. They wanted me on Depakote 
And uh, it, I mean, it was the whole thing was just so crazy. And the the whole experience makes you mentally ill. It does. I mean, because it's so insane, you can't understand what's really happening here. I think too, what what a lot of people don't understand is that's where we're headed with Obamacare. Right. That's exactly. It's the same thing. There, somebody who doesn't know you is going to make a determination whenever they feel like it in order to tell you what medication to take because they have actually the power when you when you really jump into Obamacare. It's interesting. Now this this law that you're talking about, this mandatory reporting law comes down from DHS. It comes from DHS. It's a mandatory uh, child abuse, you know, prevention law where certain professionals are everyone from doctors to teachers, uh, college professors, even uh, college janitors are mandatory reporters where they can get in trouble if they don't report suspected neglect. And the way I looked at it was that it's basically DHS is kind of fishing for kids, but this just creates a big net where they can kind of scoop them up and get a broad base of, of kids to take because they are dependent financially on increasing their caseload so they can get more money. So it creates a definite conflict of interest if their interest in, is, is, you know, in protecting kids. And there's a, a whole study on kangaroo care, which is about putting the child next to you and raising it next to you and breastfeeding and the whole thing. There's a reason that God and, you know, made us this way. So to take that child away is just, it's inhuman. Well, no, it's, not, it's inhuman, but CPS and the makers of the policy know this as a fact. It's in their own literature of studying uh, child development psychology. Um, going back to the 50s, that one of the main predictors of antisocial behavior later in life is removal from the primary caregiver. That's called it attachment theory. That was a theory based on the work of Dr. Uh, John Bowlby, um, who did studies with uh, Native American babies. And Aram, I want to hear about your third child. What happened to your third child? Yeah. Um, we, were at the, we had an emergency C-section. Well, actually, it was a planned C-section. Had her in the hospital for about three days and got released from the hospital. And we had our scheduled checkup uh, in like two days. We went there. It, was, it happened to be a Saturday, but the doctor wasn't in. But a nurse practitioner saw our baby. Everything was fine. Everything was great. They scheduled us again to come back on Sunday. Well, I called and canceled the appointment because I thought it was absurd that we had to drive another 30 miles with a little newborn baby. I'm not fond of driving a little precious little baby in a car. So I said, like, no, let's cancel that appointment. Well, the doctor, under this mandatory reporting law, reported us for potential neglect because we canceled one appointment. On Monday morning, two caseworkers and two armed police officers showed up at our house needing to verify that our baby was okay. We said, okay, here's the baby. She's fine. She was nursing and doing great. Well, they come in and wanted to talk to us, of course, and I'd already had experience with this, so I'm like, oh, man, this is not good. Um, and they spoke with us for a little while, and the caseworker, you could just see the look on her face, looking at our baby. It's like that she wanted our child. Um, so she determined that our child had to be removed, and my wife had never had any experience with DHS. And uh, she was like, no way, you're not taking my kid. The two police officers start going in to forcefully take our newborn baby away from her. It starts to get uh, into a nasty situation. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I knew what was going to happen. If my wife starts fighting with two cops and the baby gets hurt, we're going to get charged with it. We'll probably never see her again. Um, so I was just like, man, we didn't have any choice. We had to let them take her. Otherwise, you take the chance of getting assault on a police officer, endangerment, all kinds of nasty things. How did you get her back? It took ten and a half months. You just had to, you just had to cooperate with everything they say to do. Go to treatment for mental health reasons. Uh, abide by all the doctors' uh, prescribed treatments, whether it's you know vaccinating. Show up for all your appointments. And they finally gave her back. But she was switched around three different times when she was a child. And DHS knows that is one of the most 
damaging things to do to a newborn and a parent. So, so that I understand it a little clearer too, you say DHS and CPS are all part of the same agency? Yeah, it's called DHS in Oregon, Department of Human Services. Oh, Human Services. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, give us your website again and how people can reach you, because I'm sure there's going to be viewers with questions for you. Okay. Um, you can go to GMO Free Jackson County on Facebook or Mothers Against GMOs on Facebook. All right. Great. And thank you so much for sharing with us, Aram. Thank you so much. And great job on the film. Appreciate it. All right. To find out more about his film and the other films that are in the Paul Revere contest, go to Infowars.com slash Paul Revere. And his film is called Uncle Sam's Kids. Go and check that out. It's educational. It'll teach you a lot about CPS, first-hand account. And if you want to learn more about child trafficking in the United States, we have a book at InfoWarsStore.com, The Franklin Scandal, A Story of Power Brokers, Child Abuse and Betrayal by Nick Bryant. Go to the website today and read more about what's really happening in the United States and our corrupt government. I'm G. Gironetta. And join us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.